So it's been four months to the day since I've posted anything on YouTube. That means it's probably about time to start a project. And so what we have here is a Cub Cadet 70 or 100. What model it is, I don't know. I can't find the serial number on it and I don't have the original engine. So the project will be replacing the original engine that was in here with a Predator 420cc overhead valve engine. So starting off with a brief walk around of the Cub Cadet, you can see it's not exactly in original condition. At some point, somebody's painted it or repainted it again. And when I got it, there are lights screwed into the dash panel, um, like aftermarket off-roader lights. And it hasn't necessarily been cared for the best. Um, the engine that was in it had blown up at some point or another, and it was too far gone. The block was cracked, so it wasn't worth rebuilding. Kind of walking around it here, you can see that it's the previous paint job is starting to flake off. The uh, clutch is going to need some work. It doesn't return all the way, and the spring uh, is still functioning, but it doesn't push back as hard as it should be. And obviously, there is a big cavernous hole where the engine used to be. With the sheet metal off, you can see why it's a little bit more difficult to engine swap a Cub Cadet versus another kind of more standard garden tractor that would have a belt drive. The Cub Cadets, or at least the 70 and 100, use a dry disc clutch with a direct shaft drive going to the transmission, much like a larger tractor would. And to make things even more difficult, this clutch has to mount to uh, an adapter on the flywheel side of a horizontal shaft engine. Um, for those of you who worked on or work on horizontal shaft engines a lot, you know that there really isn't any means to uh, take power off of that side. Normally you'd use one of those engines and the crankshaft uh, on the non-flywheel side has a keyed shaft that you'd put pulleys on, pumps, whatever, you know, whatever you want to power with one of those engines. Well, we're doing things backwards because this is a Cub Cadet and we have to take power off the flywheel side. The parts that I have in front of me now are the parts that used to attach the old Kohler engine to the dry disc clutch. This hub would take the place of the recoil starter on the Kohler engine. Um, basically what would happen is you take the nut off the flywheel side of the shaft, uh, slide this collar on and this pin would index into a hole in the flywheel to uh, transmit torque. And then you would uh, tighten that bolt back down and sandwich it all onto the flywheel. After that, you have a uh, four bolt hole pattern on here that would bolt to this plate that has three roll pins in it. The plate with the three roll pins in it interfaces with the disc within the clutch. These pins will slide into the clutch and drive that ring. Now, while it looks like this is all actually one piece, this larger diameter section with the three holes in it is actually the uh, disc in the clutch. And when you depress the clutch pedal, it's free to move around in there. Unfortunately, I can't really spin it right now with one hand, but you can see that it's loose because I'm able to move it. When you take the clutch off, you can't move it anymore because that spring is compressing these two discs pinching this and allowing the clutch to transmit torque. Since the Predator has this triangular pattern on the recoil starter, we're not going to be able to use the old flywheel hub that the Kohler had on it. There's nowhere for this gauge pin to go, and I'm pretty sure that hole diameter is too small to let the crankshaft pass through. So what we need is an adapter. Thankfully, there is a company on eBay that sells a adapter that takes the Predator 420 pattern with that uh, uh, triangular pattern of three round bosses and adapts it to the four uh, hole pattern that goes on to the clutch drive plate. Now that we have all the parts that we need to connect the flywheel side of the Predator to the clutch drive plate on the Cub, what we'll have to do is take this recoil starter off um, and that's the big reason why we have the electric start option on this is obviously we need a way to start the mower and the old Kohler's had a starter generator. So this recoil cup is coming off. The adapter is being bolted on to the flywheel and in turn the clutch drive plate will be bolted onto the adapter. 
All right, and after a quick trip to Menards to get a proper 23 millimeter deep well socket to go ahead and get that flywheel nut off, you can see that we have the three pin clutch adapter and the flywheel hub attached to the Harbor Freight 420. After installing the clutch plate, you can see that obviously we're not quite ready to drive away with this yet because the original Kohler engine sat in between these frame rails and it was a fairly narrow engine because it had a uh, cylinder that went up and down that was perpendicular to the ground, whereas most modern overhead valve engines have this slant cylinder like that. So if you look here, you can see that both our oil fills are contacting the frame rail. So we'll have to notch those out. And I believe part of the shroud is contacting there as well. So that part of the frame will need to be notched out in ad additionally. Finally, with the engine mocked up in its new home, you can see why I have the air intake and the exhaust off of this at the moment. Um, a lot of people uh, who do these conversions end up leaving the hoods off or notching them to fit them. I didn't really want to do that. So I uh, went ahead and ordered an aftermarket intake and exhaust. One of the nice things about these Predator engines is they're very supported and well liked by the aftermarket community for go-karts and things like that. So you can find aftermarket parts to kind of adapt these and make them a little bit more lower profile so they could fit in the engine compartment of a Cub Cadet. And these are the aftermarket parts that I have on hand right now. The red piece is a air filter adapter that is built to go on the carburetor. Uh, these are for Predator 420 and Honda GX 390 engines. They share the same bolt pattern since the 420 is more or less a clone of the Honda motor. An aftermarket canister air filter. So the idea with this is it fits in line with the carburetor so you don't have the large air box sticking up over the engine. And this is a remote choke plate off of a Honda uh, GX 390. And what this will allow us to do is hook up the uh, original choke cable from the Cup Cadet and control the uh, choke without having to reach forward and messing with the plastic lever that was on the Harbor Freight engine to start with. So here's the aftermarket filter housing and the Honda GX390 choke linkage installed on the 420. Uh, like I said before, the main reason for the remote choke is to allow you to use the cable that was in originally included on the Cub Cadet to activate the choke. So instead of having a little plastic lever over here, there's these two uh, cable clamps that you feed a cable in through and then you use the cable to activate the choke. Um, something to note is that the Harbor Freight engines originally have a detent on them to kind of hold the choke closed or opened when you have it set. So the return spring isn't strong enough to overcome that, so I'll be removing that detent. And the air filter just slips right over that adapter and again keeps it well low and clear of the hood so we don't have to make any notches in it. Um, something I have to keep in mind is that this is pretty close to the clutch pedal and I might kick it with my foot if I'm not careful. So I might end up coming up with a different solution for this, but for right now that'll work. The one piece I'm missing at the moment is the exhaust. So the muffler again stands just as tall as the airbox on these and would collide with the hood. So I have a small adapter on order that uh, changes this flange. Um, I believe it's a two inch bolt hole pattern on that. Uh, it's a flange that changes this to one inch MPT. And one inch MPT is pretty common for older uh, small engine mufflers and things like that or small enough to fit in this space. Um, I ended up getting a muffler, I believe, for some of the later Cub Cadets that is meant to run crossways out to the other side of the engine in front of it. Um, not sure if I'll have enough space to clearance that in there, um, but keep in mind that once this is notched in, set down, and pushed back towards the rear when that clutch is fully fit together, we'll have a little bit more space at the front. Um, something I'd like to do eventually is add an alternator on this side of the engine somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully there's some space so I can actually run lights and things like that because the stock charging coils on the Predators, I believe, only put out two amps. So that will become an issue uh, for battery charging in the winter and, and trying to run lights. That's pretty much all I had planned for work today. Um, pretty happy having the 420 mocked up in there. Definitely takes up a little bit more room than the old Kohler did, but I think we'll make it work. 
Um, not sure what I'm going to do with this at uh, the end of the project. Like I said, I was kind of toying with the idea of putting a mower deck on it or maybe finding a snow blade for it. Um, obviously, paint work is going to happen down the road, but obviously I'm not going to paint it before I'm done working on it. It's kind of toying with the idea of maybe painting the yellow into IH red and keeping the uh, parts that are painted in the cream color as cream. So let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Um, next video will come out a little bit later just because I have to figure out and you know measure twice and cut once for those notches in the frame because I don't have a welder on me and I don't really want to have to repair any mistakes. So catch the next episode of this and I'll see you next time.